He has arrived. Lu Zhenya made no indication that she's heard the sending from one of her acolytes. It would be considered uncouth to imply that she was listening to the thoughts of her underlings while engaged in a meeting with the Supreme Magistrate of Tenhuo. Even if she knew all of her fellow sect leaders were likely receiving similar messages as they spoke. So, he is finally here, the Guildmaster of the Jade Pavilion thought. The man who had uncovered the heresy of the Marble Cloud sect defeated both the heir, matriarch, and sect elder in battle, before presenting the corpse of the last of the magistrate as proof of her heresy, though not in person. Lady Ren had arrived in Tanhuo alone before her servants, carrying the corpse in a most interesting cart. According to the words of her former underling, the other two bodies were damaged beyond recovery. Something Lu had taken for a fanciful tale at first, the one that was looking more and more likely with each day that passed with none of women showing themselves. And they would have shown themselves when the magistrate herself burned the holdings of Marble Cloud's sect down to the ground. Before slaughtering everyone involved, down to the last man, woman and child. A harsh measure, but the only one that could be undertaken when instinctive cultivators were about, Lu thought. Instinctive cultivators were like weeds. And just like weeds, they tended to sprout quickly when given fertile soil. Better to sow the garden than let them grow and multiply. Lou's eyes turned to where her former students stood amongst the lesser cultivators in attendance. For while only guild leaders were allowed to sit flanking the magistrate's own throne, the girl and other lesser guild leaders were important enough that they were allowed to be present in the throne room. Oh... And let's not forget that this man has seduced one of my more promising students out from under me, Lou thought resignedly. No, she couldn't forget that. Though it was to be expected where male cultivators were concerned. Many a girl had been lured away from her home sect by promises from an enticing young lad, and that only got worse with the more ambitious males. Though this one seemed a particularly willful and independent variant of the breed. How long that remained the case now that he had revealed himself to the houses of Ten Ho Li, didn't know. She would not wager it to be long, though. The houses did not take being told no with grace. Then again, he had already killed the leader of one. A traitor at that. And that gave him much face, and would require most present to be more circumspect in their actions. She did not know whether that would hasten or delay the end of his independence. It had certainly stoked interest. She'd heard more than one seg leader of the more uncouth sort talk about riding down this interloper like a wild stallion. She shook her head. So uncouth. Honey was better than vinegar, which was part of why she hadn't struck down her own traitorous former student for her fickle loyalties. Not when something might yet be gained by staining the girl's good graces. Such was the way of the Jade Pavilion. Announcing Johansson Jack, interim leader of the town of Jiangxi, and the vanquisher of Yin and Kui, the traitorous. Lu resisted the urge to roll her eyes at the uninspired name the masses had chosen to settle the two traitors with, though her head did cock to the side slightly as she heard something... strange. Like a hundred pebbles rolling downhill. Her eyes widened as the man himself appeared, not so much at his size or the rustic quality of the furs he had governed himself with. Honestly, the man couldn't have looked more like a northern tribesman if he tried, no. Her eyes widened as she watched him glide across the floor on a mass of... chittering black goop. Murmurs rang out from the watching lesser guildmasters to each side of the aisle, as the man drifted towards the seats of the nine. Or eight now, she supposed. She even saw the normally unflappable members of the Red Guard subtly shift their glaives, as they ridded themselves to sell their lives to delay the man from approaching the magistrate. A needless gesture... Given the woman was more powerful than any other person in the room, though not every person, which was a key part of the balancing act that kept the city running, but that was simply to be expected when dealing with a member of the Imperial clan. Fortunately for everyone, the man drew short, as the strange black goop bore him to the ground where he bowed deeply. It was certainly an entrance, one that was a little more interesting than deliberate flaring of one's intent that so commonly occurred at these events. In fact, the man surprised her by hiding his. Was that an expression of weakness, or simply a deliberate attempt to provoke the foolish? She knew she'd been thinking over this event much in the coming days. Ah, the Marsh talked about Hidden Master of Jiangxi. 
Magistrate Huang Dai's voice rang out loud and clear, her tone neither welcoming nor condemning. Magistrate? The man's voice was a bass rumble, well in keeping with his massive frame, and Lu absently wondered if she was the only one who quietly wondered how it would sound in more intimate circumstances. She mentally shook her head. She was the leader of the Jay Pavilion, not some adult junior initiate crushing on her first boy. Still, it was something to consider. It was after all a sad truth that the more powerful a cultivator became, the less men there might exist who could keep up with them, at least in any meaningful fashion. A man who could defeat one of their number, though? And an elder besides? Well, that was a prize worth getting worked up about for a woman of her stature. You have stolen from me, Jack Johansson, and by extension from the Imperial Clan. Huang Dai's fingers crackled in a casual display of power as lightning flitted between her fingers. Tell me, why should I not see you executed for this affront? You have certainly chosen to court death with your actions. If someone discards something, one can hardly be upset if someone else picks it up, he responded, head still bowed. Murmurs immediately rippled out from the size of the aisle at the man's audacious words. The magistrate scowled and Lou could well imagine why. There was a script here to be followed, and the man was not playing along. Had he simply accepted that he had accidentally stolen from her, his punishment would likely have been light in light of his defeat of the traitorous Kui. She had likely intended to retroactively gift him with land from unveiling the marble cloud sex treachery, it was a smart move, one that reinforced her as the ultimate owner of all the land outside Tenhuo, and it gave away nothing while appearing to outwardly reward him. Of course, this strange northerner had gone and messed all that up with his insolence. I have discarded nothing, she hissed. Truly, he asked. Yet in my travels here, I have seen refugees on the roads, crops withering in fields, buildings ruined and villages abandoned. If you have not discarded the lands outside these walls, then I struggle to imagine what sight would have greeted me if you had. He turned his head up, looking dead into the magistrate's eyes. A barren wasteland? You dare? Huang hissed. I do. Lightning flashed out, and for a second Lou resigned herself to seeing this strange outlander dying for nothing. It was not uncommon. After all, not even a male could court death and remain unscathed for long. Yet between one blink and the next, the man remained unscathed. The strange goop formed around him like a shield, and as she washed, it faded away once more. Or at least most of it did. Some black, smoking pieces remained behind. They give off an acrid odour, she noted. It does not smell like burning flesh. Another curiosity to add to the strange male's tally. My apologies, the man bowed. It seems I have given offence with my words. Lou could tell the magistrate was tempted to throw another lightning bolt, but held herself back. End of curiosity entering her features. It was, after all, not every day that someone survived one of her thunder strikes, let alone without any outward injury. It was clear the woman's interest was piqued, and as Lou noticed a flash of triumph cross Ren's face in the background, she realised that had likely been the plan all along. How interesting, Huang murmured. And with those words... All of the available guild leaders sagged internally, for none of them would dare to approach a man a member of the Imperial Clan has shown interest in. That really would be courting death. And likely exactly what this strange newcomer, and her former acolyte, intended. He had likely bought himself freedom from any attempts by the more aggressive sex to bring him in line, at least for now, though it was a dangerous game they were playing. For the Imperial Clan were as fickle as they were powerful. As demonstrated by the way Huang leaned back in her seat, a bored expression coming over her features as she waved her hands dismissively. For your services in uncovering the treachery of the Marble Cloud sect, you will be allowed to remain the overseer of Jiangxi. You will answer directly to me rather than any of the ten families. I would expect the first tie within the year. No comment was made on the attempt on his life that was made moments ago. Such were the realities of dealing with a scion of the Imperial Clan. Most kind... The man bowed once more. He turned to leave before turning back. Though, if you are interested, I might have a more interesting form of payment than spirit coins or gold. More than one woman present drew in her breath. He wasn't. Was he? 
If the next words out of his mouth had anything to do with pain with my body, he was definitely going to die. Interesting or not, just because it was commonly accepted that things like that happened, didn't mean they were done openly. And definitely not at this level of power. Hmm, Juan nodded. The man grinned and something strange happened. As if from thin air, the most peculiar spear she had ever seen appeared in his hands. Tell me, ladies of Tenhuo, have any of you ever heard of a rifle? <laughs>